In this guide, we'll go over all of the actions the monk learns from level 50 to 90 in order. We'll go over how each action is meant to be used and when applicable, the recommended way to use it. We will also summarize changes to the rotation at level 60, 70 and 80. In the summary, we'll take time to outline both an opener and general rotation as well as cover stat priorities. Please be aware that this guide assumes you have some preliminary knowledge as listed here. Relevant videos can be found in the description or the top right corner. Now then, at level 52, you learn the weapon skill Form Shift, which causes you to enter a super form that counts as all three forms at once. From now on, try to start every fight with this Formless Fist effect active, and if there's any significant downtime in a fight, you should use Form Shift first before spamming Meditation. The minor way this changes your opener in a fight is that your initial Dragon Kick grants Leaden Fist. For three or more targets, you should instead skip the initial arm of the destroyer and start with Four Point Fury. At level 54, Steel Peak is permanently upgraded to the Forbidden Chakra, nearly doubling its damage. This does not change your single target rotation though. On AoE, Forbidden Chakra beats Howling Fist on up to three targets. At level 60, you unlock the Master's Gauge. When you use Perfect Balance, the Master's Gauge tracks which form each weapon skill you used belongs to in the form of Beast Chakras. Then, depending on the combination, it changes your new weapon skill Masterful Blitz into one of four actions. If all three Beast Chakras belong to the same form, then Masterful Blitz turns into Elixir Field, which does a massive amount of damage, including an AoE component. It also grants the Lunar Nadi, which I will get to shortly. Using Elixir Field also grants your Formless Fist, the same effect that Form Shift grants, letting you easily resume your rotation from wherever you were. If all three Beast Chakras are different, meaning you effectively did a regular 1-2-3 combo, although in any order, then Masterful Blitz turns into Flint Strike. Flint Strike is identical to Elixir Field, except granting the Solar Nadi instead. If the three Beast Chakras match neither of the two previous combinations, Masterful Blitz instead turns into Celestial Revolution, which does significantly less damage than both of them and has no AoE component. Celestial Revolution will either grant the Lunar Nadi, or if you already have it, it instead grants the Solar Nadi. It also grants Formless Fist. If you have both of the Nadi and three Beast Chakras, regardless of what they are, Masterful Blitz will turn into Tornado Kick, which does an even more massive amount of damage with an even bigger AoE component and of course also grants Formless Fist. Since the Tornado Kick variant allows you to freely choose what 3-step combo you wish to perform, you should make use of Dragon Kick and Bootshine as these are still the strongest options. Since level 50, the introduction of Form Shift and Master's Gauge have affected your rotation significantly. Form Shift makes your initial GCD a lot better and also lets you open with any action you prefer after downtime. The Master Gauge and Masterful Blitz means that 1 in 3 perfect balance usages has to be a regular 1 to 3 combo of some sort to grant you access to the Solar Nadi. Your opener is extended significantly by this new Masterful Blitz. With Form Shift, start with Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes into Forbidden Chakra and then demolish like before. Then use Bootshine into Perfect Balance, followed by Dragon Kick, Bootshine, Dragon Kick. Finish the Perfect Balance with Elixir Field, and then follow up with another Bootshine, making use of the Leaden Fist and weave another Perfect Balance. This time, start with Twin Snakes into Dragon Kick, and then Demolish, finishing with Flint Strike. Remember, you should use your strongest three GCDs in a single form when using Perfect Balance unless you are actively trying to perform Flint Strike, as using three different form GCDs tends to be weaker overall. At level 64, you learn the ability Riddle of Earth, which reduces all damage you take by 20% for the next three GCDs or 10 seconds, whichever comes first. Take note that it is not 20% damage reduction times three, it is simply 20% damage reduction. This is useful when you know unavoidable damage is incoming, and since the ability has 3 charges and a relatively short cooldown, you can even chain them back to back for a decent duration defensive cooldown in a pinch. 
At level 68, you learn the ability Riddle of Fire, which boosts your damage for a while. Make sure to always late weave Riddle of Fire, and from now on, try to save perfect balance for Riddle of Fire, using it during the damage buff or just before to get the most value out of it. Since the charge time of Perfect Balance is shorter than Riddle of Fire's cooldown, you can make sure to always have at least one Perfect Balance per Riddle of Fire. In your opener, Late Weave Riddle of Fire after Twin Snakes and delay Forbidden Chakra to after Demolish. At level 70, you learn the ability Brotherhood, which boosts your own and all party members damage by 5% and also causes everyone's GCDs to have a chance to grant you Chakra stacks. This means that during Brotherhood, it is very important to stay on top of using Forbidden Chakra as often as you can. Be careful mashing the button as you may risk pressing Meditation instead. Try to use Riddle of Fire close to when you use Brotherhood. With some planning, you can often have two perfect balance charges for Brotherhood too, but as long as you bring one to this burst window, that is fine. Make sure to not sit on perfect balance charges if you can avoid it. Since level 60, the introduction of Riddle of Fire and Brotherhood has adjusted your opener slightly. Use Riddle of Fire after Twin Snakes, moving Forbidden Chakra to after Demolish. Then, after Bootshine, you should use Brotherhood followed by Perfect Balance. Monk's GCD is extremely fast compared to other jobs, so if your connection isn't the best, you may find it genuinely impossible to double weave without clipping. If this is the case, I would suggest using Brotherhood alongside Demolish and either use Forbidden Chakra after the initial Dragon Kick or after Perfect Balance starts a little later. At level 72, you learn the ability Riddle of Wind, which causes your auto attacks to happen twice as fast. You don't have much control over your auto attacks, but there are ways to optimize this, although it is a very advanced trick. Riddle of Wind's cooldown misaligns it from both Riddle of Fire and Brotherhood regularly. This is fine, and you should use it on cooldown regardless. In your opener, use Riddle of Wind after the first GCD after using the initial perfect balance, meaning after your initial perfect balance dragon kick. At level 74, Deep Meditation's 80% activation chance is upgraded to 100%. Additionally, Howling Fist is permanently upgraded to Enlightenment, nearly doubling its potency. This means Enlightenment is better than Forbidden Chakra on two or more targets. At level 76, Greased Lightning reaches its Manum Opus of 20% GCD reduction, planting your base GCD at a clean 2.0. It also boosts the damage bonus from Disciplined Fist to 15%. At level 78, you learn the ability Anatman, which while channeled keeps your Disciplined Fist buff at maximum duration and also freezes your current form's duration. Overall, this ability is extremely difficult to use, as it activating the GCD means that it is only useful during downtime and the payoff of using it amounts to. You will have Disciplined Fist active on the first GCD, which is a really poor reward for how much effort can be necessary to use it well. My advice on this ability is to simply ignore it if you don't know for certain where to use it. At level 80, you learn the weapon skill 6-sided star, which does hit surprisingly hard, but has the downside of having a GCD that is twice as long as all other weapon skills. 6-sided star also gives you a 30% speed boost for 5 seconds when used, letting you run away quickly after using it. 6-sided star should never be used as part of your general rotation. However, if your target is about to either become untargetable or otherwise unreachable for a bit, or you need to get away from the boss for longer than a single GCD, use Six-Sided Star as the final GCD and run away as late as you can to make the most of it. When a boss is about to die, finishing with Six-Sided Star is also a bigger finish than most of your other options. Since level 70, Riddle of Wind is introduced as another cooldown to use on cooldown. In the opener, use it after the first Dragon Kick during Perfect Balance. If anything will cause you to be unable to attack anything for several seconds, make sure to finish your attack with Six-Sided Star and make use of its mobility to run to safety if necessary. At level 82, Armor of the Destroyer is permanently upgraded to Shadow of the Destroyer, which has the Opa Opo form potency of Armor of the Destroyer by default. It instead gains the same Opa Opo form effect as Bootshine, causing it to be a guaranteed critical hit. Before you ask, no. Hitting 3 targets with Shadow of the Destroyer will not give you 3 chakra stacks, unfortunately. 
When using perfect balance on 4 or more targets, you should use Shadow of the Destroyer instead of Rockbreaker, as the guaranteed critical hit is far more valuable than the potency advantage Rockbreaker has. When producing Solar Nadi, AoE of course still will entail using each of the 3 AoE options once. At level 84, Thunderclap gains an extra charge, and the trait Melee Mastery boosts the potency of all your regular single target GCDs by about 10%. While this does not actually change your rotation, it is a huge damage boost. Now, Forbidden Chakra and Enlightenment will do the same damage on two targets. At level 86, Flint Strike, the Solar Nadi Blitz, permanently upgrades the Rising Phoenix, increasing its potency. This does give rise to an alternative opener that is extremely raid buff centric, wherein you perform the Solar Nadi perfect balance sequence twice in your opener to align better with raid buffs down the line. Due to the amount of encounter knowledge necessary to make good use of this opener, I will not really be covering it in this guide. Aside from this, Rising Phoenix does not change your rotation. At level 88, Brotherhood is upgraded to cause your weapon skills to always generate a chakra stack during the buff. This does mean that a critical hitting weapon skill will result in two chakra stacks. This does not change how you use Brotherhood, but does make the chakra usage during it even more frantic. Take note that these chakra stacks are granted the instant that the damage numbers appear, which means you can sometimes do a GCD, spend 5 chakra, and then gain the chakra from the preceding GCD. At level 90, Tornado Kick, the grand finisher of the Masterful Blitz, is permanently upgraded to Phantom Rush, boosting its potency to absurd degrees. This however does not change your rotation. To round off, let's look at your attack rotation, starting with an opener, followed by general rotation, including AoE adjustments, and finishing with stat priorities. The Monk is an extremely complicated job when you look closer into it. For this reason, I will only present the standard opener, also known as Lunar Solar. After that, the general rotation I will try to make somewhat intuitive and explain how the burst windows fit into it. But I want you to be aware that, in case you truly want to master this job, there's so much more to learn that I strongly encourage you to seek out. Make sure to form shift and then 0.2 seconds before the fight starts, use Thunderclap followed by Dragon Kick. If you plan to use a tincture, a so called burst potion, this is the time. If you don't and happen to have some issues double weaving, instead weave Forbidden Chakra here. Then use Twin Snakes and Late Weave Riddle of Fire. Demolish and if you didn't do it previously, weave Forbidden Chakra here. If you do have double weaving issues, instead weave Brotherhood here. Then use Bootshine and assuming you can double weave, weave both Brotherhood and Perfect Balance. Otherwise, simply do Perfect Balance. Now do Dragon Kick, weaving Riddle of Wind, Bootshine, Dragon Kick, Elixir Field. Then do Bootshine and weave Perfect Balance again and do Twin Snakes, Dragon Kick, Demolish, Rising Phoenix. Keep in mind that if at any point you reach 5 chakra stacks, and you certainly will, use Forbidden Chakra in your next weaving opportunity. This then leads into the general rotation. Just like the opener, Monk has multiple ways to perform their general rotation. The rotation I will be explaining may be similar to the optimal drift rotation, which is best when you cannot rely on your raid team playing perfectly, as well as it being more flexible. You perform the regular 1-2-3 rotation like it has been done since level 50, alternating bootshine with dragon kick, true strike with twin snakes, and doing demolish once, snap punch twice. The main idea to this rotation is that Riddle of Fire can be used on cooldown, just make sure to late weave it. If the weaving of perfect balance coincides with Riddle of Fire, make sure to late weave Riddle of Fire and if you cannot double weave, delay Riddle of Fire. Perfect balance should always be performed after either Bootshine or Dragon Kick. For Lunar Nadi, alternate between Bootshine and Dragon Kick. And for Solar Nadi, you can essentially do whatever of each of the forms in whatever order you like. Although, dot snapshotting suggests that you should try to use Demolish if Riddle of Fire is up. Make sure to keep at least one perfect balance for Riddle of Fire, and as Brotherhood comes up, try to plan it such that you can fit both perfect balance sequences in both buffs. When using Brotherhood alongside Riddle of Fire, if possible, perform perfect balance one GCD early such that these two buffs can come together. If you cannot double weave, do Riddle of Fire first, and then Brotherhood. 
use Riddle of Wind whenever it is available. Although, if cooldowns overlap, you can use Riddle of Wind after the other cooldowns. Because of the volatile nature of chakra stacks, simply use Forbidden Chakra at the first opportunity when it is available, properly weaving it. Finally, make sure to finish your attack opportunities with Six-Sided Star and to never use it in the middle of an attack sequence. In relation to this, you can end a fight by using two casts of Dragon Cake and then finishing on Six-Sided Star. Because Dragon Cake is the highest potency spammable weapon skill you have, form or not, just keep in mind that this is an advanced strategy and I would advise you to make sure you know that the fight is ending in about 2 or 3 GCDs if you do this. Before moving on to AoE adjustments, let me just briefly point out that using your damage cooldowns at all is far better than not using them because you have a hard time with doing it perfectly. So while learning, you may want to simply use all your damage cooldowns immediately when they become available and then master these optimization tricks later. On three or more targets, replace Bootshine and Dragon Cake with Shadow of the Destroyer, and replace True Strike and Twin Snakes with Four Point Fury. If the targets will survive the full duration of Demolish, apply it to each target one at a time. Use Shadow of the Destroyer for Luna and Natty perfect balance. Use Enlightenment in place of Forbidden Chakra, and take note of the frontal cone AoE shape of Enlightenment. On four or more targets, skip using Demolish and simply use Rock Breaker. Additionally, if you have to move away, using Shadow of the Destroyer is better on four targets than using Six-Sided Star. Finally, regarding stat priorities. In almost every single case, item level is more important than the correct secondary stats, so always pick the gear piece with the higher item level and thus most strength on it. After that, you want enough skill speed to reach a GCD of at least 1.94, Going further to 1.93 may make it easier if and when you start trying to perfect the monk playstyle. The main effect this may have is related to how well your GCD lines up with the Riddle of Fire cooldown to minimize drift. After skill speed, monks prefer the tried and true critical hit followed by determination and then direct hit. Critical hit boosts your chakra generation and it also happens to be the best scaling of the three damage boosting stats. Determination and Direct Hit are extremely close in value, but Determination tends to pull slightly ahead because of its reliability, as well as the fact that Raid Buffs that boosts Direct Hit reduces the value of the Direct Hit stat. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything to add, please leave a comment down below. Fun fact, while Greased Lightning's 15% and 20% variants are Monk exclusive and do not appear in the Pugilist's trade list, they are actually active if you remove the Soul Crystal while the appropriate level. Isn't that something?